Hi, Pete here from Club Engineer. In the previous talk through, we modified both our robot and our program for two sensor line following. But we found there's a problem. It's falling off the line. From experience, however, we know that when the robot's falling off the line, it needs some fine tuning. And it's probably either adjusting the inside motor's speed, we've already done that, it's running at reverse 20 with the outside motor running at forward 60, or it's adjusting the sensitivity or the turn threshold of the light sensors. So it's probably that. So let's have a look at fine tuning the turn thresholds on the light sensors. We'll start by opening our Calibrate Light Sensor program from a while back. And we know that this program is set up to read the value of light sensor 1. Well now that we've got two light sensors, we're going to have to read both values. So that's easily done. Uh, we need to drop down another light sensor, drop down another number to text block, drop down another display block. We need the number to text block to take the text out, put it into the display block. We need the second light sensor block to take the intensity out and plug it into the number to text block. We need to change the light sensor so it's reading sensor 4. And the display block, so instead of showing an image, it's showing text. Now the first display block is set up to display the text on line 4. So let's make the second display block display the text on line 6. Finally, the display clear on the second display block needs to be cleared or not checked. The clear property will clear the screen before displaying the text. We don't want that because there's already some text from Light Sensor 1 on the screen. I shall now compile, download and run this program. I've got this handy utility here from the Brick Command Center that allows the value showing on the next screen to show on the computer screen. I've got the robot sitting over a green tile at the moment. Light sensor 1 is reading 51, 50, and light sensor 4 is reading around about 54. We can do a little bit of work to pretty this up. We might put uh, some text ahead of each of these saying which sensor it is that we're looking at. So come back to our program. We're going to drop a text block in between the number to text block and the display block in each case. Now the text block allows us to add two bits of text together. We want to break that data wire. We're going to take the output of the text block, plug it into the display block expand the data hub on the text block. I'm going to take the value from the number to text block and pass it into port B. And then down here on port A, I'm going to type the word sensor, S-E-N-S-O-R, colon, space. And that will join the text sensor, colon, space, together with the value that has been read and display it nicely on the screen. I'm going to do the same thing to this one here take the value out, plug it into the display block, just collapse that data hub, expand this data hub here, take the value out of the number to text block for the light sensor 1, plug it into port B, collapse the data hub, and in uh, the property for A I'm going to write sensor 1 colon space. Good. We'll compile, compile, download and run that. See what we've got. Ah, look at this. I messed up um, writing of the sensor 4. I can see what I did. This needs to say sensor 4 colon space. Good. Now we compile, download and run. Much better. Now, as you can see, that's nice and neat. All right, now we're going to read these values for both green, white, and silver, and enter them into our spreadsheet. Now, 
I was using Google Docs as my spreadsheet tool. You can use either Excel or OpenOffice, whichever you prefer. Now we need to modify the spreadsheet slightly for sensor 4. So I'll come down here to cell A4 and type in the word sensor space 4 colon and hit enter. I'd like that to be in bold so I'll select it and click on the bold speed button. Uh, now we're going to toggle back to our tool that lets us view what's going on on the brick and read some values. I have the robot sitting over a green tile at the moment and as we can see sensor 1 is 51 and sensor 4 is 55. 51 and 55. Now you can see I entered those values 50 and 53. Uh, they just dropped slightly. 50 and 53. Now you can see I've entered those values where it said black. So let's just change that to green. The reason for this is that with the two light sensor line following robot, we're regarding green and black as pretty much the same thing. Until it is, of course, that we, it comes to detect the turn hint. Uh, I'm going to measure the values for white. 64 and 66. 64 for sensor 1 and 66 for sensor 2 and I'm going to measure the values for silver 72 and 68 72 and 68 now we need to calculate the halfway point for green and white for sensor 4 now we can do that by coming up to the place where we calculate the halfway point between green and white for sensor 1. I click on that cell, cell C2, and you can see we've got a formula. Open brackets, B2 plus D2, close brackets, so that's adding that and that, divided by 2. So that's the formula for average. You add up all the values you want to average and you divide them by the count. In this case, we're only adding up two values and we're dividing them by the number two. The best way to copy this formula down to the cells here and here is to simply select it, copy it to the clipboard with Control C. Notice how we get a dotted line around the cell that's being copied. Come down here and paste it with Control V. We have a look. The spreadsheet tool has done some magic. It's changed the cells that are being referenced. So down here, we're adding cells B4 and D4, B4 and D4, and we're dividing them by two. We can do the same thing one more time with this formula, select it, copy it to the clipboard, we get the dotted border, come down here and paste it with Control V. Good. So these values here form our turn thresholds for line following. There are a couple more things I'd like to quickly do to this spreadsheet before we walk away from it. I'm just going to make it a little bit easier to use under competition circumstances. So the first thing to do is I want to show all the cells that I don't want to enter data into, into on competition day. So I'm going to select the whole spreadsheet by clicking this cell here. I'm going to select the more button. I want the fill can. I'm going to fill the cells in with a colour. I'm going to fill them in, in with a very pale grey. Now, the cells where we want to enter values will be filled with white. So I'm going to select each of those and select to fill them with white. And you can see how much easier that will be to enter values into the spreadsheet when we're working under pressure. We're much less likely to make a mistake. Good, so we need to enter values into all the cells that are white. Finally, we want to move these values out of, out of the calibration spreadsheet and into our program. So I'm going to make those red, just to make it easier, again, under competition conditions. And I'll close that off. 
All right, that's good. Now we need to enter the value 57 as the turn threshold for sensor one and 60 as the turn threshold for sensor four. We'll go to our line following program, two sensor line following, sensor one, Sensor 1, the threshold is 57. So I'm going to change the threshold from 50 to 57. Sensor 4, the threshold is 60. So I'm going to change the threshold from 50 to 60. Notice that the threshold for sensor 4, I actually have to change in two places, here and here. I'm going to compile, download and run this program and we'll see how it performs on the rescue course. That's much better. The robot now navigates all the simple line following tiles. Have a shot at modifying the calibration program yourself and then update the calibration spreadsheet. When that's done, Enter the new turn thresholds into the two sensor line following program and fine tune the program and the robot for line following. When that's done, we'll come back in the next talk through and have a look at detecting the green and making the decision whether to turn left or right. Good luck fine tuning your robot. The material we're covering in these talk throughs is hard and sometimes, in spite of your best effort, you may find that you're stuck. Often, it only takes a small amount of face-to-face -face help to get you back on track. If you think you'd benefit from face-to-face -face help, then open your web browser and type clubengineer.org slash help. You'll see a list of times and places where face-to-face -face help is available. At these sessions, you'll get all the help you need to get back on track. You may also meet like-minded young engineers such as yourself for collaborating on projects down the track. Face-to-face -face sessions are run over the school holidays and after school during term time. They're available for all ages from years five to year 12. We also run face-to-face -face sessions for teachers and mentors. We'd love to meet you at one of these sessions and learn what you have been building.